What's up guys, it's Sam Robles from Apollo Fishing and today Bud Rowland's gonna show us how to tie and fish his numero uno fly, so stay tuned. In my mind, I've got a big red on the line That's where I go when I'm itching To feed my seven day addiction Folks, how y'all doing out there, Bud Rowland? I have had a tremendous amount of calls over the years about how do you tie the numero uno fly. Why the numero uno? You may have heard of it, you may have not, but the numero uno has taken many IGFA world records and caught about every fish that's out there, and whether it's freshwater or saltwater. And uh, we tie it on size hooks from six, four, two, one, and one aught. So you can actually fish it a uh, surface fly. You can fish it as a slow sink or a fast sink. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you some little tricks about tying this fly. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to grab some hooks here and uh, we're going we're gonna to tie on it's called a mustad called a big game hook. It's basically a J hook. But we tie it on, on basically two hooks. We do tie it on a, a Temco 600S, which is good for tarpon and snook. This happens to be a Norvice made by a guy out in Seattle area named Norm Norlander, who passed away. Really great guy in the fly fishing industry and a good friend at one time. And the reason is, I say one time because I've been out of the fly fishing business for 20 some years, so I don't go make the shows anymore like I used to. All right, if for new fly tires, this is called a hook. This is a Norvice. It's a true, it's a true rotary vise, pretty slick vise. This is a bobbin that we put thread in, and we're going to start tying this fly. And you can, they have an automatic bobbin too. But on the front, where this is called the eye, I'm going to build a little chicken leg out there. I call it a chicken leg because it's got a, the chicken legs big at one end and small at the other. Okay, I've done that, so I'm going to come back again. I'm going to put another little chicken leg right here. And what we're doing is we're creating a saddle right there that we can put lead eyes on, bead eyes, or whatever. And when we tie it down, this helps to hold it, makes it good tight so it doesn't turn on you when you're fishing. And we're going to go back to the end, to the bend of the hook here, and we're going to put a pretty good sized chicken leg. So, I started tying flies probably when I was about 9 or 10 years old, and that was back in the early 40s. That's giving my age away a little bit. <laughs> so there you can see, that's a little bigger here, and we're going to do a fly called, it is called the numero uno. And the numeral uno, this is a numeral uno, and here this is one version of it. This has fox fur and a fish skin, and then it's got a weedless deer hair uh, in the front that you can throw it in the mangroves, grass, and it's amazing how, how well this fly fishes. But we call it the tails of numeral unos, and the reason we call it tails of numeral unos is because the original tail was a twister tail. Now this is a twister tail right here. This is also this is the numero uno that has bead eyes, and the one we're going to tie right now have, will have twister tail with some fox fur, and then it will have uh, the weedless deer tail, bucktail. And people say, well, that how that that'll get in the way of catching the fish. It will not get in the way of catching the fish. It it works great. Another one that we're going to show you. Of course, that's just another version, twister tail. And here is a fly. It's, we call it, it's in the Nuno, Nuno family. And uh, everything eats a worm out there. And I know you've got friends, if you're a fisherman, possibly that are offshore fishermen, and they have what's called skirts. And they replace these skirts on their, on their rods and reels once in a while. I mean, on their on their on their lures, so they throw these things away. A lot of them. What you don't want to do is go by. Hey, old buddy, 
when you get ready to replace the skirts on your fish offshore fishing lures can I have those old skirts because they are excellent fly tying material and I mean literally everything will eat it and snook love these things tarpon like them there's a time of the year in Florida where there's a mass migration of a type of worm over there and I mean the tarpon go crazy over them they shoot like a bullet they throw magnificently they're just a fun fun to fish anything you can catch on a rod and reel any fish that eats bait and they have to eat bait they have to eat some type of zooplankton or phytoplankton zooplankton animalistic or fish Zoop and phytoplankton would be your your vegetable type food chain so anything that eats will eat these flies believe me now this fly has taken five IGFA world records in the lower Gulf of Mexico right here uh, on South Padre Island, Port Isabel area. It holds three trout records, and there's been a redfish record, and another record was taken on this fly. So it will catch fish. It's weedless. It's fun to, to fish, and you can fish it on top, subsurface, or fish it deep down for flounder, whatever you want to fish for. All right, now I'm going to take some... We're going to make it pretty. We're going to put a little, uh, uh, this is not fox birch. You can use marabou or whatever. We're going to use this, this, fly, this right here on this first one. We're going to put this right, get off there. So you put that between the, the yeah, we, Now that, the reason we put that there. We don't, we don't want it laying down like this. We want it laying up. That's the reason I'm building this chicken leg right back here. So that keeps that up high, whether you're using bucktail in here for, for the tail, feathers, or whatever you put. It gives it a better profile than just going down and sinking around and then maybe wrapping around hooking a hook if you don't use it weedless like we do. And then we're going to go get our twisters. These are twister tails. And that's a chartreuse cutter in it. So we're going to take two of these. They make it in a small and a large, and we're going to use the small. On our big hooks, we'll use the larger. There's one. Come on, baby. And there's two. So I'm going to take that, put one on this side, and we're going to put one on this side. And this is a tremendous attractor for fish. And, but the only thing is, barracuda, piggy perch, mangrove snapper, they love these things and they're going to tear them up. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put eyes on. Now we can use a lead eye, we can use bead eye, we can use aluminum type eyes. On this one, we're going to use bead. And you can go to the craft store or your fly shop, and there's different types of beads. Mainly two we use. The two main beads we use are are a gold and a black. And this is neat. You see, I put two beads on there. About 30 years ago, I went to a fly shop out in Arizona. I was trying to find some beads, and they said, "What do you want beads for? Well, hey, they ain't no good. They're gonna break." And I says, "When you go down and you fish the Caribbean." And you take what's called a crazy charlie, which is a well-known bonefish fly. It's made out of uh, a bead chain. It's a subtype of metal. And you buy, you'll spend a lot of money buying these flies. You go to Belize or you go to the uh, Bahamas and you fish for bonefish. You rinse your flies out when you get ready to come home. You come home, you leave them in your pack. A month later, you take them out, they're corroded to where they're almost falling off. A bead does not corrode. Now, we, now I've taken, I've run that through twice, and i pinched. This is the neatest eyes you will ever use, the cheapest eyes and the best eyes. Give it a try. I'm going to put that on, in that saddle, that saddle we put in there a while ago. Now, that pulls down right between that saddle. And we're going to figure eight that around there a few times. I'm going to do about three there and about three 
there and when you're pulling down for you fly tires out there a lot of people break their thread pull straight down and that will tighten that on there to where you can hardly turn it with your finger now solid as can be and then we're going to run that on up there and i'll tell you what if you got kids this is one of the best best things you could teach that kid is to tie a fly because they get a lot of hand-eye coordination. And I kids, when they were little, long, when, they, when they got started walking and they listened to me and watched me, I would have them in here tying flies and they all become expert fly tires and uh, uh, made some fantastic, fantastic flies. And I keep those flies. I've got those old flies that I mean, oh, they look terrible, some of them, uh, you know. <laughs> but he ought to, they have progressed through the years, and it's, it's just a great exercise. And it's a lot of fun. And you go catch, you tie a fly, go catch a fish on it, man, you're hooked. I guarantee you, you are hooked. This is called Estes, and this is an olive color. So when you're choosing colors, uh, does that have anything to play? And as far as the food chain goes and the color, you can do natural, and you can do a tractor. Now we do another fly that we will maybe not do on this session, maybe we will, called the Attractor Mud Minnow. Also was taken a couple world records. A deadly fly, it's one of the best flies I know of. In fact, between the two of them, they're pretty hard to beat. But we do it in natural colors and we do it in attractor colors. Now here's, we're going to put this on here like this. And we're going to Now you can also, if you'll notice on some of these, we put some, some rubber legs on here and you can do that. You can, you can leg it, get it any way you go. These, these flies are deadly, they're fun, they're fun to fish. Now the only thing we lack right now to finishing this off, numero uno, is we're going to take a little bucktail. This, this is some, some old tail I cut and make, make flies out of. We're going to take a little bucktail, small amount, and we're going to make that, make it weedless. Now, you, we actually originally call this a beard, and we have what's called, you can tie a full beard like this, or you can do one we're going to hear here. This is, we call, this is a cut beard. You're going to pull that up. This is a cut. We're not going to do a full. And we're going to wrap this, we're going to palmer this around, wrap this around 20 times. Now right now I'm going to take, I'm going to line my scissors up with the tip of my, my hook right here and I'm going to cut that like that. And I'm going to give it about five or six more. I'm going to pull it back. You see that? Pull it back a little, come down again. Pull it back a little, come down again. Now we're going to take what's called a Martelli tool. That's this little jobber right here. You can do half hitch with your fingers, but this is much better. It serves a better job. It's going to bury that thread in there. And I usually hit it at least a couple of times. I pull that. That pulls it back some more, too. There is a numero uno, folks. And you can do it in any color. You can do it in natural colors to look like a shrimp. And I'm going to show you some more in here. This is a natural, that's more natural, kind of looks like a shrimp. You could put, you could put uh, legs on it to give it a shrimp, more shrimpy look. I'm going to stick that up here so you can see it good.
This is the one where we use the tail off that you the people are going to throw away sometimes. And you can do it in any colors. You can be imaginative. You can create, you know, nature's look and a, a crab or a shrimp. And you can make them look like a crab also. This is this one right here took the this particular fly right here took the world record largest trout ever caught on a fly, second largest ever caught in the world, right here in the Laguna Madre. And uh, we still got some of that, some of those uh, genetics out there, y'all. If you live up north, come down here and go fishing. We got some good <laughs> guides down at South Padre Island, Port Isabel. We got some great guides on up the coast, Port Aransas. Uh, Corpus Christi in Rockport and on up north. If you haven't tried fly fishing, give it a try because, and especially if you tie a fly and you take a lesson and you go out wade fishing or fish with a captain, go if you can afford to go with a guide and they're reasonable, they'll work with you. And uh, I'm going to tell you, it's a, it's one of the, I've been fishing, I've been fly fishing since I was probably eight or nine years old. My first fly rod was a bamboo rod and a cheapy. I didn't fly fish with it, but I wanted to, but it it had it kind of curved and it was made out of bamboo and had been enameled and that enamel would break off of it. And I'd put a fly on it, but I'd have to put me a worm. I was just a kid, you know, and I'd sneak up on a rock, I'd see a trout down there, I'd put that in the worm down there. And that's how I started fly fishing. And then a, a guy that a distant relative of mine was a dry fly fisherman. I got to watching him. And I was amazed, you know, to see him cast a dry fly out there back in Wyoming where I was a kid. And those trout had come up and hit that net and fly. Oh, that's exciting. And so after World War II, I bought my first fiberglass, because they came out with fiberglass in the World War II, rod. It was an eight-foot rod. It was about a five-weight. And, oh, man, I started dry fly fishing. And... I've been in love with fly fishing ever since. And I'm 83 now, going on 84. I know I don't look it, but I am. <laughs> and uh, I'm still very active. And I love fly fishing. And I love uh, working with people and helping them if I can. So, uh, Palo Fishing is, is doing this, uh, this little video here. And I hope that you've seen the fly, what we've done. I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. And he'll have numbers where you can get a hold of him or people or more information on, and we're going to have some more on her, I guess, aren't we? So yeah, just over there. We're going to do week. some more. Yep. So I hope you enjoyed the tying the numero uno fly. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do another numero uno. Uh, and this one we're going to do, we're going to use what's called fish skin. Right there, fish skin. This is, if you can find any of this, you better buy it because it's like gold. And we're going to take. That what this was originally designed for was making offshore lures and then they finally started putting it out in the fly fishing world and then they quit it for a while I don't know if you can still get it or not but some of the older fly shops may have it now there I've cut a piece off and I'm going to put a put a tail on by V so I'm going to take and cut that up there like that I don't know if you can see that or not I'll just make a V in it, like so, like that. I used to say like so a lot. <laughs> now we're going to taper this to go on the hook. And that's going to be our tail right there. I'm going to put some thread on there. And you know, it's almost, this is November. Today, I think the day's November 12th, getting close to turkey time, so... Instead of calling this a chicken leg, hell, let's call it a, we're going to call it a turkey leg. This is a turkey saddle. Turkey leg saddle. That's the first one, and we're going to go out here on the bend of the hook, and we're going to put a big turkey leg on there. I like turkey leg better. It's almost turkey time. <laughs> yeah, it's almost wahalote time. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is that fish skin that you saw me cutting up there a while ago. Did a pretty good job on it, and there's a little trick to putting this on. We're going to slowly just kind of put that in there to set it a little bit, and not pull it tight. But now, now we want to pull it tight because we're going to stretch it a little, 
and we're going to pinch it in there a little bit. Beautiful. That's that's where we want, right like it. Now we're going to this time we're going to use we're going to put in the saddle between the two turkey legs. We're going to put a dumbbell eye. This is a dumbbell eye. Why they call it dumb, I don't know because I think it's pretty smart. But they that's what they call it, dumbbell. And it, you can, the dumbbells come in plastic, they come in in a kind of an aluminum deal. And again, we're going to figure eight on on there. And I like to go th about three like that, about three like that, and a couple here. And then again, when you pull it down like this, it really locks it in. But you pull down. That's solid now. So this is called pumpkin and black. Now that ought to stir up some interest to an old redfish or something. Get him excited. And he's just having an awful lot of action in the water. I like that rust. That's been a good color too. So how long have you been fishing the Uno then, Bob? I've been fishing the Unos. Right. Sam just asked me how long I've been fishing the Uno color. I mean the Uno. I've been fishing it for, a, for I was fishing it freshwater first for bass years and years and years ago. And I come down here but I didn't. I hadn't put the uh, all the stuff. I, I haven't created the, the saltwater version of it. And when I moved here, you know, I was fly fisherman, but I was mainly a bass and and trout fisherman, having grown up part of my life in Wyoming. And uh, I said, you know, I came down and I I bought a place at Port Mansfield. That was back in 1973. And uh, I said, you know how these trout look just like those I catch up in the mountains, you know. I said, I'm going to try fishing them on my fly rod. Well, the biggest mistake I made when I moved here and started saltwater fly fishing, those were freshwater rods and reels. Well, very soon they corroded pretty bad. So I started searching for saltwater fly fishing equipment. And uh, I wound up at... Uh, at the Austin Angler, and I wound up at a store in Dallas, and I couldn't find everything, everything I wanted, and I wound up getting back in business. I'd sold out a business in Kansas and kind of took three years off to fish, hunt, and uh, spent a lot of time in Mexico, all over Mexico, fishing and fly fishing and diving and spear fishing, and I even chased a few girls. So, But uh, I had a lot of fun, and anyway, I... I I needed saltwater equipment, and uh, I had gotten back in business too. And there was no place to buy it anywhere in the valley. Nobody fly fished down here then, and that was in the 70s. And so uh, I wound up setting up a line of fly fishing in my office. Well, pretty soon my office was full of fly fishing equipment, and I didn't have no office left. So I moved to another area, and I put a 10,000 square foot area together, put one of the largest fly shops in the country in there, and then I wound up teaching for about 12 to 15 years as my hobby became a hobby and uh, we taught I had about 350 local students in the valley and about 50 international students over those years and to this day I still once in a while I'll get a somebody will send me a fly from Alaska or from South America this is a fly that I caught these fish on they'll include a picture with it's pretty neat and uh, but I sold that shop out when I was about I guess about 20 some years ago. But S Sam Robello, Robello, Robello? Robles. <laughs> anyway, he's, he's, he's really doing a job trying to put a neat shop together here, building rods, uh, 
teaching all different types of fishing, interviewing guides, giving you all the updated fishing information on the lower Laguna Madre, fresh and salt water, I'm right. sure, yeah. and building some really magnificent rods. And you can go in there and build a rod and go fish that rod. And, a fly too and go fish your and, fly. And fly fish. He's building some neat fly rods. I threw one here a while back and it was pretty doggone neat. Anyway, I've got, I better quit talking and do some work. <laughs> I got to put the make this a, a, a weedless, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little white bucktail, and we're gonna leave a full beard on this one. Now I told I told you the difference between a full beard and a cut beard on the one we did a while ago. Now this one here is going to sink. It's got this is a beaded lead eye. This uno right here will sink approximately one and a half to two inches a second. So if you're fishing, you know, uh, fish are on the bottom. You're in three or four or five foot of water. Well, you you can kind of estimate that how how fast that's going to be going down to get to where those fish are. And right now we just had a cold front go through here. And that's going to drive them fish off the shallow water if they're smart. And they will go into the deeper water in the inter intercoastal or deep areas. And, and you take a sink and fly and throw out there and just let it go down. And jiggy a little as it's going down. Hey, you're going to have some fun. You, you're going to put the leche on the porchy. <laughs> Numero uno. Try it. Go see Sam. All right, well, thanks guys for watching and staying tuned to the video. I definitely uh, learned something myself here. I've seen Bud tie these plenty of times, and he ties them really fast. And today it was nice seeing him slow it down and really taking the, uh, showing us the steps of, of how to tie his numero uno. So uh, let us know in the comments below if, if you go out there and try this plot. Let us know what, show some pictures of you guys uh, catching fish on the unos. Uh, if you haven't already, please like uh, and subscribe to our channel. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank Adios, you. amigos. <laughs> See you on the water. Don't come up to me when I'm fishing, though. If you do, come slow. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, bud. In my mind, I've got a big red on the line. That's where I go when I'm itching. To feed my seven-day